Dear friends, in this lecture, I am going to introduce one of the most familiar group of organisms which are considered as the world's deadliest animal or the two-winged devil. And that group of organism of today's discussion is the mosquitoes. After going through the lecture, you will get an idea about the background with brief highlight on the history and the importance of the study, taxonomy, morphology, and life history and behavior of mosquitoes. The first question that comes to our mind is, why do mosquitoes get special attention? Because mosquitoes create some problems to human being in terms of annoyance because of buzzing sound or flight etc. Because of biting or subsequent allergic reactions and most importantly mosquitoes act as a factor of some disease causing pathogens and parasites and we call those diseases as mosquito borne diseases. Actually, nuisance caused by the mosquitoes have been the subjects of writers since antiquity. Even in the writing of Homer, Aristotle, Pliny, all mentioned about the nuisance created by the flies, including mosquitoes. The human history was also profoundly influenced by mosquito-borne diseases like malaria, yellow fever, lymphatic filariasis, so and so. But till the end of the mid 19th century, it was not known to the world that the mosquitoes were the factors or the carriers of those pathogens and parasites that actually caused those diseases. In 1880s and 1890s, two landmark discovery occurred and opened the door of modern medical entomology. Two distinguished pioneers in this field are Patrick Manson and Sir Ronald Ross. Patrick Manson was the first person who demonstrated for the first time that mosquitoes could act as the carrier of disease causing agent. He is known as the father of tropical medicine and father of modern medical entomology. He reported in 1878 in China that Culex pipiens fatigans is a factor of Usseria bancrofti, that is the causative agent of Bancroftian filariosis. And that was the landmark discovery. His finding was then published in Custom Gadget and Journal of Linnean Society of London, Geology, in 1878. Even it was the first report that arthropod act as vector of pathogen. Then blessed with guidance and mentoring of Patrick Manson, Sir Ronald Ross developed the curiosity to find out the secret behind the malarial disease and made his landmark discovery on 20th August 1897 in Secunderabad, India, after dissecting Anopheles mosquito that was earlier fed on malaria infected person and observed malarial parasite in mosquitoes midgut. In 1898, working in Calcutta, India, he established the role of mosquitoes as factors of avian malarial parasites from diseased spiro to healthy spiros. For this groundbreaking discovery, he received Nobel Prize in 1902. Since then, during the past one and a half century research, it is established that mosquitoes are the most important arthropod affecting human health by acting as vector of wide range of human diseases like malaria, filaria, encephalitis, dengue, yellow fever, jika, chikungunya, etc. 
Overall, we can say that mosquitoes are distributed all over the world except some permanently frozen area. They are the vectors of diseases that cause early death, debilitation, intense irritation, extensive blood loss to human, livestock, wildlife, and impact overall productivity of human and livestock and create economic hardship in the concerned countries. So the question comes, in this 21st century, do we need to worry about the mosquito-borne diseases? The answer is definitely yes, because at current times also, mosquitoes cause millions of deaths every year. If we look at the WHO report, in 2017 itself, malaria alone caused 4,35,000 deaths. Every year, global death toll of malaria is more than 4 lakhs. More than 219 million cases recorded globally each year. Many countries are reporting their first outbreak of Jika and Dengue. Means the Dengue mosquitoes has been expanding and the cases of these diseases has been increasing. Incidence of dengue has risen 30-fold in the past 30 years. More than 96 million symptomatic cases of dengue and estimated 40,000 deaths are recorded yearly. More than 3.9 billion people in over 129 countries means half of the world populations are at risk of dengue. The previous slide shows the global scenario of mosquito-borne diseases. Now, the question is, what is the status of mosquito-borne diseases in India? Unfortunately, India holds first rank in dengue and filariasis. 53% of global dengue cases and 29% of global lymphatic filaria cases have been reported from India. Out of 101.2 million global dengue cases, India reported 53.2 million cases. Similarly, out of 29.4 million lymphatic filaria cases, India reported 8.7 million cases. India also holds fourth rank in malarial disease, comprising 3 to 4 percent of global cases. Majority of the malarial cases are reported from African countries. After having this background information, let us come to know what is mosquitoes. So, mosquitoes are dipteran insects of family Culocidae. The word Culocidae comes from the Latin word culex, which means net. Mosquitoes are arthropods, as they possess jointed or segmented body and appendages. An exoskeleton made up of chitin, which is a nitrogenous polysaccharide. Body cavity is of hemocyl presence of ventral nerve cord and dorsal brain, body weight bilateral symmetry. They are insects as they bear six legs. They are dipteran flies as they possess two distinct wings at their adult stage. They belong to suborder Nematocera with fully developed larval head well-developed antenna and mouth parts in both larvae and adults, open cubital cell in wings, stylets like piercing mouth parts in adults. 
It belongs to Subarimili Kyulicoidea and family Kyulicidae. It frames doings, having scales along the veins and the posterior margin. Body is slender, legs long covered with scales, antenna, pylos and plumose type and elongate piercing proboscis with stylets. The family Culicidae is further divided into three subfamily, namely Toxorin Gaitini, Enophilini, and Culicini. The subfamily Toxorin Gaitini poses only one genus, that is, the Toxorin Kites. Toxorin Kites comprises approximately 76 species. This group of mosquitoes are not medically important as they do not bite human beings and other vertebrates. But notably, they are being tried to be utilized as biocontrol agent as they feed on other mosquito larvae. The subfamily Anopheline comprises three genera, Anopheles, Byronella and Chagasia. Out of them, the genus Anopheles is highly important as around 60 species of Anopheles have been reported as the factors of malarial parasites. The subfamily Culicini comprises highest number of genera. Total 34 genera with more than 2500 species have been reported. The Culicini subfamily is divided into 10 tribes. Many of the genera of Culicini subfamily are medically important and among them Edis, Culex, Mansonia can be mentioned. So the classification presented in this slide was proposed by Knight and Stone in 1977. After this classification of Knight and Stone, many changes have taken place at different times. Especially, reclassification of tribe Edini under subfamily Culicini brought major changes in recent classification. Worldwide, three groups of mosquito species are important. Anopheles gambi complex, Culex pipiens complex, and Edis subzenas stegomia complex. Two important Anopheles gambi complex of Africa are Anopheles gambi and Anopheles aroviensis. Between these two species, Anopheles gambi is more anthropophilic than Anopheles arabiensis. This Anopheles gambi complex are the vectors of malaria and lymphatic filariasis. Worldwide, two medically important species of Culex pipiens complex are Culex pipiens, which is also known as the northern house mosquitoes, and the Culex quinquefacetus which is known as the Southern House Mosquitoes. Culex pipiens are the temperate species and Culex quinquefacetus, the tropical and subtropical species. The Culex pipiens complex are the vectors of lymphatic filariasis, St. Louis encephalitis virus and other encephalitis viruses. Two medically important species under the Z Edis subzena stegomia complexer, Edis aegypti and Edis albopictus. Edis aegypti is also known as the yellow fever mosquito or the urban mosquitoes, and Edis albopictus is known as the Asian tiger mosquito. They are the vectors of den virus, yellow fever virus, chikungunya virus, and Zika virus. Now, based on recent classification, 3,540 mosquito species under two subfamilies and 112 genera are recorded all over the world. 
the subfamily toxorin chitinae earlier proposed by knight and stone now it is placed under subfamily culicinae india is holding fifth position in mosquito biodiversity in india at present 393 mosquito species under 49 genera are recorded out of them 31 species are recognized as vectors of mosquito borne diseases the table shows the name of the mosquito species those act as vectors of mosquito borne diseases in india and this is published by patasar g et al 2014 in the journal of checklist so the first disease is the malaria which is solely caused by the zanas anopheles from india anopheles culicifesis anopheles bimai anopheles pluviatilis anopheles minimus anopheles stephansi anopheles sandicus anopheles annularis anopheles jayporiensis anopheles philippinensis anopheles nevips anopheles varuna and anopheles maculatus have been reported as the vectors of malaria all these anopheles species are under subgenus cilia this slide shows mosquito vectors of japanese encephalitis j virus uh, may carry by three mosquito genus namely culex anopheles and mansonia the culex mosquito species those act as vector of japanese encephalitis virus in india are culex vishnui culex pseudo vishnui culex tritinorincus culex fascosifala culex quinquefacetus culex zelidus culex white mori all under the subgenus culex and culex bitinorincus culex infula culex epidermi all under the subgenus oculiomia so the anopheles species that act as carrier of zay virus in india are anopheles anopheles barbirostris anopheles anopheles peditaneatus and anopheles cilia subpictus the mansonia species uh, that act as vectors of j virus in india are mansonia mansonioides annulifera mansonia mansonioides indiana and mansonia mansonioides uniformis again the vectors of dengue and chikungunya disease are same in india in both the cases the vectors of dengue and chikungunya viruses are aedes stegomia aegypti and aedes stegomia albopictus in both the diseases uh, for west nile disease and the vector mosquito species are recognized in india are culex culex vishnui culex culex quinquefacetus for the disease filariasis the three mosquito genus culex mansonia and downsiumia are found responsible the species identified as vectors in india are culex culex quinquefacetus mansonia mansonioides annulifera mansonia mansonioides uniformis and downsiumia nevia Mosquitoes are holometabolous insects. They show complete metamorphosis. In a single life cycle, they possess four distinct life forms, and these are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Each life form is different from the other life forms. Again, mosquitoes are amphibiotic insects. they pass their egg to pupal stage in aquatic environment and the adult stage in terrestrial environment depending on species the egg larval pupal stages prefer specific aquatic habitats for their growth and development 
Some of the species prefer temporary surface water like tidal pool, rain pool, flood water, etc. Some other species prefer permanent surface water like pools, streams, swamps, lakes, etc. Some other species prefer natural but temporary water holding containers like tree holes, leaf axils, fruit husk, like that. Some of the species prefer artificial water holding containers like drinking water holding containers, discarded tires, etc. Although adult stage is mobile than the other stages, but they also prefer characteristic resting, foraging, and overwintering habitats. Now let us try to understand each of the life form of mosquito life cycle. Now, the first stage is egg stage. For different mosquito species, shape and size of mosquito eggs may vary. In most of the mosquito species, shape is elongated, ovoid, spindle shaped, and in some species, shape is spherical. The chorions, which are the outermost layer of the egg shell, have specific pattern and surface structure for each species. In Anopheles mosquito, carrion of egg bears unique air-filled compartments that helps to float. In Culex mosquito, egg bears a cup-shaped corolla at one end that helps egg to sit vertically on the earth surface. So in the figure one, you can see the eggs of Anopheles, Culex, Edis, Toxorin kites, showing variation in shape and chorionic sculpturing pattern. Some of the mosquito species lay eggs individually. For example, Anopheles, Edis, Toxorin kites, Sorophora, Oscillorotatus, etc. Some other mosquito species lay eggs in cluster. For example, Culex, Coquilitatia, Culicetta, Mansonia, etc. lay their eggs in clusters. Culex species attach their eggs to form a single clump or floating egg graft. In figure 2, 2a, you can see the floating egg graft of Culex. Mansonia species form submerged egg cluster. So figure 2b, see, you can see the submerged egg cluster of Mansonia, which is, at, which is attached to the underside of leaf. Based on egg morphology and morphometrics, different scientists at different times have been trying to identify genus, species, as well as different strains of single species of mosquitoes. In the slide, in figure one, I am referring the work of Uyn et al. 2018, where they first attempted with the aid of scanning electron microscopy, differences of egg surface morphology of Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. So in this figure, you can easily observe unique sculpturing pattern of Aedes mosquitoes eggs with central tubercle, then minute tubercle, micropylar end, outer chorionic cells, etc. In figure 2, I am referring the work of Sumon et al. 2009. They studied egg surface morphology and morphometrics of different strains of Culex quinquefaciatus. In figure 2a, you can see the whole structure of Culex quinquefaciatus egg with uh, micropylar end, anterior region, and posterior region. In figure 2b, you can see the micropylar corolla, micropylar here in this figure 2c, micropylar digs, and figure 2 D, you can see the small, medium, large tubercle with the wheel units. In figure 3, I am preferring the work of Kirti et al. 2014. 
they studied egg surface morphology of armiseries subalbatus eggs under scanning electron microscope and this first figure shows the whole egg at lateral and dorsal view figure this figure shows the micropylar region of armiseri subalbatus eggs this is the posterior end region this is the dorsal tubercle and these are the ventral tubercular views in figure 4 i am referring the work of tiagi et al 2016 who first time used egg morphology and morphometry to differentiate three sibling species of anopheles culocyphesis collected from Madhya Pradesh, India. In figure A, B and C, you can see the lateral view of the whole egg with egg float of Anopheles culocyphesis sibling species. And figure D, E, F uh, shows the ventral view with deck area of the sibling species of the Anopheles culocyphesis. So overall, these works and other similar works on egg morphology and morphometrics infer that these characters can be used as identifying key for genus, species, and even sibling species identification. Mosquitoes may lay eggs on or in the water surface, for example, anophilin, toxorin chitin and some culicin mosquitoes like mosquitoes under tribe Sebitinia sector lay their eggs on or in the water surface. But some of the mosquitoes do not directly lay their eggs on the water surface but they prefer to lay their eggs on some wet substrate which have the maximum chances to be inundated later on. For example, some culicin mosquitoes under tribe Edini lay their eggs individually on the wet substrates. Some mosquitoes may lay eggs under water vegetation. For example, the genus Mansonia attached the clustered eggs under water vegetation. In tropical and subtropical region, eggs usually take two to three days to complete their embryonic development after being laid. In cool climate, however, eggs take longer period for completing the embryonic development which is usually seven or more days. Soon after embryogenesis, larvae hats for those mosquito species who, load, who lay their eggs directly in water. But for the species under tribe Edeni, larvae may remain quiescent until inundated. In those cases, eggs can tolerate period of cold and desiccations and may remain viable for years. Eggs hatch when submerged in water at warm temperature and the oxygen level of the water drop by the microbial activity. The breeding habitat of mosquitoes may be natural or artificial. In the breeding habitat, eggs are laid larvae hats and further grow and develop. In figure 1a showing the breeding or larval habitat of Anopheles species reported by Rhoda et al. 2010, it includes the habitat includes ground depressions, irrigation ditches, drainage ditches, ground pools, ponds, rice paddies, stream margins, swamps and uncultivated areas. This figure shows artificial breeding habitat of Aedes mosquitoes reported by Jetta Sioux et al. 2015. The habitat includes artificial containers, tires, polishes, etc. Now coming to the next stage of mosquito life cycle, that is the larval stage, which consists of four larval instars. Larvae are known as wigglers or wrigglers, as the wriggles or wiggles in water when disturbed or touched. Mosquito larvae can be distinguished from all other aquatic insects by mainly two characters. Number one, they have no legs. 
Number two, the thorax is wider than the head and abdomen. The head of the mosquito larvae comprises a distinct capsule, a pair of eyes, a pair of antenna, chewing mouthwards with many brushes, combs, sweepers, which are mainly used for feeding. Thorax is, as already mentioned, that broader than the head and abdomen. Segments are not apparent and thoracic segments do not bear legs. Abdomen is cylindrical with eight distinct segments. Respiratory siphon or air tube with a pair of spiracle present at the terminal abdominal part in culicin and toxorine chitin mosquitoes. But in anophilin mosquitoes, respiratory siphon is absent and therefore in those cases, spiracles located on a short spiracular plate. The terminal abdominal segment, that is the anal segment, bears four anal papillae which are used in osmoregulation. Different other structures of larvae like comb scales on segment 8, pectin spines on the respiratory siphon, a saddle sclerite on anal segment, and different brasses and hair tufts are differently modified in different mosquito species and are useful in taxonomic identification. Figure 1 shows the structure of Culex larva. You can see the massive parts of the body, the head, thorax, and abdomen with respiratory siphon and anal papilla. So here in the slide, figure 1, 2, and 3 show larval structure of one representative member of the genus Anopheles, Culex, and Edis. The first figure is the larva of Anopheles quadrimiculatus. Here, you can see the body is covered with long brasses and hairs. The abdomen comprises palmate hairs. The anal segment bears the saddle sclerite, but there is no air tube arising from the eight abdominal segment. Figure 2 is the larva of Culex quinquefaciatus. It shows absence of the palmate hairs, but presence of rows of comb scales on segment number 8 of the abdomen. Presence of elongated air tube or respiratory tube that bears pactin teeth on its surface. This is the individual structure of a pactin tooth and individual structure of comb scale of Culex quinquefaciatus. Figure 3 is the structure of the larva of Edis aegypti. Here also, there is comparatively fewer numbers of hairs and brasses than that of Culex, Quinquefaciatus, and Anopheles quadrimiculatus. Absence of palmate hairs on the body, but presence of air tube or respiratory tube with pactin teeth on its surface and a single row of comb scale on segment number 8. So this is the structure of the comb scale and structure of a single pactin tooth of Edis aegypti. If we compare the head structures, then the inner and outer clypeal hairs particularly present in Anopheles quadrimiculatus, but these two pairs of hairs are particularly absent in Culicin mosquitoes. Let us try to understand how do larvae plot in water. Actually, larvae are not bioned. They are suspended at the water surface by some special hairs and spiracular structures. Anophilin larvae stay horizontally most of their time at the water surface with the help of dorsal palmate hairs present on the abdominal segment. In figure 1, 
you can see the horizontal position of Enophilus quadrimaculator and in the figure 2 you can see the palmate hairs present on the abdominal segments that actually helps to cling the larvae to the surface tension of the water surface. Culicin larvae show up down movement in the water column while at the surface the respiratory siphon open above the surface film and the larvae hang diagonally downward. In figure number three you can see the position of the larvae of Culex quinquefaciatus. So it forms an angle at the water surface and the head uh, directs toward downward. On the other hand, Mansonia, Coquilitidia, and some Mimomia species do not come to the water surface during the larval period as they remain submerged throughout the larval period and their respiratory siphon attaches to the tissues of the aquatic plants. Larvae grow and develop from first instar to fourth instar and then undergo pupation. Pupal stase is a non-feeding stase and larval stase is a feeding stase. And therefore, larval nutrients play an important role in successful completion of the rest of the life cycle of the mosquitoes. So, well-nourished larvae become an a healthier adults. Many of the things like developmental period, adult emergence, body size, sexual maturity, fecundity, even bacterial capacity, etc., are influenced by the larval food types and its availability. So the basic question comes: what do larvae feed and how do they feed? So in the aquatic habitat, larvae feed on variety of organic, living and non-living materials. The organic detritus they usually devour are dead plant materials and dead micro and macro invertebrates. The living organisms the larvae accept are bacteria, protist, fungi, algae, yeast, some other microinvertebrates and small macroinvertebrates. So, for collection of food items, larvae utilize five ways filtering, gathering, scrapping, shredding, and praying. Anophilus mosquito filter feed at the water surface. Many eddies, oscillatetas, and culex filter feed near the surface. But depending on the availability of the food, they can also shift for gathering, scrapping, shredding of organic matter at the bottom surface. Coquilititia and Mansonia, which are anchored to the submerged vegetation, utilize a combination of filter feeding, gathering, and scrapping techniques within their immediate surroundings. Some sorophora species and toxorin kite species depends on prey and they grab their prey with the help of sharp mandibles and maxillae. Now, how many days larva takes from its time of hatching up to pupa formation? Does the larval period remain constant throughout the year? So let us have some example. At ideal conditions of food and temperature, the entire larval period for Aedes aegypti is about five to six days. The first three instars takes about three days with about one day per instars. The fourth instars takes about three days. In males, larval period is about one day shorter than the females. At the same ideal conditions, the entire larval period for toxodin kites and omeo species is approximately 2 to 3 weeks, means 14 to 21 days. 
and even at cooler temperatures and when food is not sufficiently present the developmental period may more than months larvae of some mosquito species can even tolerate temporary entrapment in solid ice for example snow pool oscillatus species so from this example we can say that larval period is species specific even at ideal conditions different mosquito species show different duration for completion of its larval stage the period is also environment dependent with increase of temperature along with food availability the period is shorter and with decrease of temperature and food scarcity the period is prolonged now coming to the third stage of the mosquito life cycle that is the pupa pupa is known as the tumblers because they tumbles when disturbed mosquito pupae are different from other holometabolous insects in that they readily react to external stimuli like vibrations and actively swim in water the shape of pupa is comma shaped in figure 1 i am showing the pupa of anopheles gambi which is in resting position at water surface you can see the comma shaped structure head and thorax fused to form a common structure called cephalothorax and abdomen curled beneath the cephalothorax pupa gets oxygen through a pair of respiratory tube called the air trumpet here this is the air trumpet that arises from the dorsal mesothorax of the cephalothoracic part to the eight abdominal segment of the uh, abdomen two broad pedals are attached which is called caudal pedals that helps in swimming pupae dive when disturbed propelling themselves with the help of caudal pedals pupae spend almost all of its time at the water surface in most species they are buoyant because of the presence of ventral air space ventral air space is an air pocket present inside the cephalothorax that provides buoyancy buoyancy in pupa actually facilitate emergence of adults in most of the mosquito species but pupae of few species are not buoyant and cling to the surface film to keep from sinking like that of larva pupae of some species like the plant piercing pupae of mansonia coccolithidia etc do not rest on the water surface as they attach to the underwater vegetation they release their attachment from the plants when ready for adult emergence like that of the larval period the pupal period is also species specific and environment dependent pupal period for both male and female sex of most of the species is about 2 days in tropical part the period ranges between 1 to 3 days in some mosquitoes like toxorin kites omia species pupal period may be 5 to 6 days in lower temperature in all species the pupal period is longer at the time of adult emergence the pupa becomes stationary at the water surface the abdomen starts to straighten within the pupal cuticle the pupa molds to form the ferret adult at the time of emergence it ingests air then split the cephalothorax and finally the adult comes out the entire process takes only a few minutes the newly emerged adults stand on the water surface for few minutes because they cannot fly just after emergence adults could take flight after proper sclerotization of their body only pupa is a non feeding stage so the initial survival and flight activities of newly emerged adults depend on the larval lipid and glycogen reserves 
Now coming to the fourth stage of mosquito life cycle, that is the adult stage. The adult body is slender with thin six legs, two narrow elongate wings. Body surface is covered with scales, city, etc., which give the characteristic color of each species. Head with two compound eyes with 350 to 900 omitidia on each eye. Antenna is filamentous, sexually dimorphic, male with plumose antenna that helps to perceive the sound of wing beat to locate females in flight. Females with pilus antenna, which is less feathery. Pedicel part of antenna contains Johnston organ, which is a mechanoreceptor that responds to the vibration of sound. Antenna poses many mechano and chemoreceptors for perceiving mechanical and chemical stimuli from the environment. Figure 1 shows schematic diagram of an adult mosquito with its body part. One of the most important body part of adult life stage of mosquito is the proboscis or the mouth parts. It is a composite structure and consists of a labrum, one pair of mandible, one pair of maxilla, one hypopharynx, and one labium. Labrum, mandibles, maxillae, and hypopharynx are needle-like fine stylets, and they together form the fascicle, which is used by the female mosquitoes to penetrate the host skin. The mandibles and maxillae are used to puncture the skin, and that assist the fascicle to advance into the host tissues. Throughout the length of the hypopharynx, Salivary channels runs and deliver saliva during probing into the tissues. The labrum is curled laterally to form the food canal. And through the food canal, the blood meal or sugar solution is drawn up of the proboscis. Male mosquito and in female non-blood feeding mosquitoes, mandibles and maxillae are atrophied and therefore they cannot pierce the vertebrate skin. In case of male and female toxorin kites also, proboscis is non-piercing type and the proboscis is carved downward. Here in the figure one shows female mosquito mouth parts with variation in structure of stylets at their tips. So here in this figure, you can see this is the labium that forms the sheet of the proboscis. And at the tip of the labium, it bears two labella and one median short ligula. So this, this is the mandible, one pair of mandible present and the tip of the mandible is pointed. This is the maxillary stylates, but the tip of the maxillary stylet is serrated or blade-like. This is the hypopharynx, another stylet. The tip is pointed. And this is the labrum, one of the stylates of the fascicle. The tip of the labrum is also pointed. The figure 2 shows the fascicle of stylates of adult female mosquitoes. It shows the arrangement of stylets in a single fascicle within the group of the labium. So this is the labium that forms the sheet. Here this is the maxilla, this is the mandible and this is the hypopharynx with the salivary canal. This is the labrum, the upper lip that curled to form the food canal. So at the tip, the labrum, mandible, and hypopharynx are pointed, but the terminal end of the maxilla bears toothed like structures. So these four stylets forms the fascicle, and 
The labium that forms the sheet helps to advance the fascicle during probing. Maxillary pulp, another distinct structure of adult head part, could be used for mosquito identification. So, from the base of the proboscis, one pair of maxillary pulp arises. They bear many sensilla for receiving information from the environment. In both male and female anephelin mosquitoes, maxillary pulps are as long as or longer than the proboscis. In female culicine and toxorin chitin mosquitoes, maxillary pulps are shorter than the proboscis. But in male culicine and toxorin chitin mosquitoes, maxillary pulps are longer than the proboscis. In figure 1a, showing the head of Anopheles, in both female and male, maxillary pulp is as long as the proboscis. But in case of male, the tip of the maxillary pulp is broader. In figure 1b, showing the head of Culex, in case of female, comprises very short maxillary pulp than that of proboscis and males with long curved or brass-like pulps. So based on the structure and the length of the maxillary pulp, one can identify the sex or the genus of a mosquito. Let us discuss briefly about the thoracic part of adult mosquito. Thorax is a relatively rigid muscle-filled locomotor unit. Although the thoracic part comprises three segments, prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax, but from outside segmentation is not clear. Meso and metathorax bear a pair of lateral spiracle. The appendages arising from the thoracic parts are three pairs of slender legs, one pair of distinct wing, and one pair of halter. From each thoracic segment, one pair of slender leg arises. Tarsi of the leg at tip bears two claws and an empodium. Wings bear scales along the veins and the hind margin. Halters, which is a small lobe-like structures, actually modified hind wings, act as a balancing organ. Inside the thorax, a pair of three-lobed salivary gland present. Esophagus modified to form two small dorsal diverticula and one elongated ventral diverticulum or crop. Sugar solutions are first stored in diverticula, while blood meal directly passes to midgut. Now, the bands and markings present on the thorax and thoracic appendices could be used for identification of mosquito genus and species. Here I am presenting an example of Edis aegypti. Here the thoracic part shows the layer shaped bands of Edis aegypti, which is specific for that particular species. Similarly, legs of Edis aegypti showing the white basal bands that is also specific for that particular species. Figure 3 shows wings of Anopheles quadrimaculata. You can see the specific light and dark pattern of the scales present in the wings of Anopheles quadrimaculata. There are four black spots present marked here. So, means it shows that the bands and specific pattern can be used for identification of mosquito senas as well as species. Let us discuss about the abdominal part of adult mosquito body. So, abdominal segments are distinct. Abdomen may bear some bands or markings which are useful for genus and species identification. In figure 1, you can see the basal pale bands and V-shaped nodes 
on the abdomen of Aedes vagans, which is specific for that particular species. Due to the presence of membranous area between targites and sternites, abdomen can expand and therefore can accommodate large amount of blood, sugar mills, and developing clutches of eggs. Segment number nine is very small, bears, cerci, post-genital lobe of the female, claspers in male, etc. Female pauses one pair of ovary. Each ovary may bear more than 200 polytropic ovarials, one to three numbers of sperm storing spermatica, small accessory gland, seminal bursa, except in most Anopheles mosquitoes. In figure 2, you can see the female reproductive system of Aedes aegypti. Here, you can see one pair of ovary, ovary with egg follicles. Here is the common oviduct, three numbers of spermatica, small lobulated accessory gland, and seminal bursa. In male, there is a pair of testes with sperms in various stages of maturation, a pair of seminal vesicle that store mature sperms and accessory gland. Now question is, uh, do mosquitoes need food at the adult stage? Yes, they need food. Both the male and female mosquitoes, after emergence up to three to five days of adult life, usually feed on natural sugar like plant nectar, honeydew, spoiled fruit, tree sap, etc. to obtain energy for sexual maturation, flight, and other activities. After sexual maturation, they met. But in some species like Culicetta inornata, Deinocerites cancer, etc. Sexual maturation occurs at the time of emergence or only a few hours later of their emergence and therefore mating occurs almost immediately. In those cases, males wait for the emergence of female at the site of emergence. Throughout the adult life period, both the sexes of many species continue to feed on the natural sugar. However, exceptions are there. For instance, female of some domestic mosquito species may not depend on natural sugar source for deriving energy. Now, if both male and female adults depend on sugar meal for deriving energy, then again question arises, why do female adults specially need blood meal? So the female adult needs blood meal for yolk synthesis and egg development. Blood meal stimulate a cascade of hormones of brain and ovaries to initiate egg development. Blood meal can stimulate egg development if the amount is sufficiently large and the female ovarian follicles are at the resting stage. The female with its ovarian follicle at resting stage is called as gonoactive female. But for gonoinactive females, sugar meal or preliminary blood meal is required to bring the follicle to the resting stage. Blood is rather toxic to male. In males, enzymes for blood protein digestion is minimal or lacking. Scientists reported that the enzyme adenosine deaminase level is 30 times lesser in males than in females of Aedes aegypti and Culex quinquefaciatus. Antiplatelet epirus enzyme, antiplatelet activities, etc. of salivary juice associated with blood feeding is minimal or lacking in males. Structurally also, mandibular stylate of males is shorter than the female that make the fascicle difficult to suck the vertebrate blood in case of males. 
again question comes do all female mosquitoes need blood for egg development the answer is no the obligately autogenous mosquito species do not need blood for egg development but most of the mosquito species are anotogenous the females of which need blood to mature their eggs after having a sufficient amount of blood meal females develop and lay one mature clutch of eggs which is called gonotropic concordance host seeking behavior is usually inhibited if blood meal distend the abdomen above a certain threshold level and also by humoral mechanism females of some anotogenous species even take supplementary blood meal during egg development as a substitute for sugar for example Aedes aegypti Anopheles gambi etc generally anotogenous mosquitoes are vectors of pathogens and parasites of their host blood is not prerequisite for the development of eggs at least for the initial batch of eggs in females of autogenous mosquito species autogenous mosquitoes are of two types obligate and facultative type the facultative autogenous mosquito species develop the first clutch of eggs without blood meal adult females depend on larval energy reserves for the development of the eggs for the subsequent gonotropic cycle they need blood meal the obligately autogenous mosquito females do not take blood meal in their lifetime they depend on the larval reserves and plant sugar the feeding stylids are also not designed to take blood meal of vertebrate host as their mandibles and maxillae are atrophied adult mosquitoes are not active throughout 24 hours so question comes where do adult mosquitoes rest so after emergence from the pupal stage adults generally search for shelter in vegetation tree cavities animal burrows caves man made structures like barns culverts basements etc that provide dark moist and cool environment they remain there except the period of activity so knowledge of resting site is important for developing resting trap against mosquitoes in a particular locality based on this knowledge center for disease control and prevention develop different modified resting trap for collection of resting mosquitoes however resting trap is not reported to be effective against aedes sorophora coccolytidia but reported effective against culex culocita anopheles mosquitoes so anopheles mosquitoes at resting position hold the proboscis and abdomen in line and make an angle to the substrate where it rest in figure 1 you can see the resting position of anopheles mosquitoes here the proboscis head and abdomen forms a straight line and it forms an angle with the substratum where it rest the culicin and toxorin chitin hold the abdomen in various position but the proboscis always form an angle to the abdomen so in the figure 2 you can see the resting position of aedes which is one of the culicin mosquito it forms an angle the abdomen and the proboscis forms an angle with the substratum so proboscis had an abdomen is not in a straight line during resting 
adults perform different grooming movements and frequently wave their hind legs. Now, understanding of mating behavior and mating swarms may help to end address many mosquito related problems. Study on the mating behavior and mating swarms of mosquitoes have been getting importance for the last few decades to develop novel vector control strategy targeting mainly the male swarm killing. So male mosquitoes cannot mate just after emergence as they need few days for maturation of male accessory glands, external genitalia, etc. But females can mate after emergence from pupal case without participating in mating swarms. They may be inseminated by the males awaiting in the emergence site. But most of the species take 24 to 48 hours time period after emergence to mating. They can mate before taking the first blood meal, but exceptions are dear. Mating generally occurs at mating swarms, and swarms comprise thousands of mosquitoes. In the figure one, you can see an image of Anopheles gambi mosquito swarms. The little white dots against the blue sky are the male mosquito swarms. Males form the mating swarms on mating markers or swarm markers and stimuli released from the markers perceived and processed in the brain and elicit mating behavior. Mating system supposed for Anopheles gambi is lake like where male display at mating sites to attract female and female thereafter join the swarm. Swarms are usually species specific. Acoustic waves produced by the wing beat of female is detected by the male with the help of plumose antenna and Johnston organs, the wave of which is species specific. Usually, a single insemination is sufficient for the adult life of a female. During mating, sperms and accessory gland secretions are deposited in genital chamber or seminal bursa of female, which are finally stored at spermatica. One of the important question is, how do mosquitoes locate their host? Actually, host location is a series of behavioral events which can be categorized into three phases in any blood sucking insects. Firstly, appetite searching, which is driven by hunger. Secondly, activation and orientation, which is driven by perception of host stimuli. Thirdly, attraction. In this final phase also, host stimuli are used to bring the blood sucking insects into the host immediate vicinity. And finally, decision is made whether or not they will make contact to that particular host. So mosquitoes use volatile chemicals to locate vertebrate host. Here, the olfaction play a major role. Some of the best documented olfactory stimuli are carbon dioxide, lactic acid, octanol, fatty acids, etc. Carbon dioxide is involved in both activation and orientation behavior of all blood sucking insects, including mosquitoes. The level of carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere generally in between 0.03% to 0.05%. 
Carbon dioxide is also emanated from the host skin and the major part is emitted in exhaled breath of human being, which is about 4.5%. So, it is reported that the carbon dioxide in an odor plume emitted from exhaled breath of a person remain above background concentration until it is diluted by a factor of about 100. Mosquitoes are very sensitive to very small changes of carbon dioxide level in air. So, Particularly in mosquitoes, change in concentration of carbon dioxide is a very important factor to elicit behavioral response. Actually, combinations of stimuli act as a surer guide to the presence of a host than a single stimulus working alone. Different mosquito species show differential preference for a particular stimulus. For example, Anopheles quadriannulatus show strong response to carbon dioxide, while Anopheles gambi show weak response to carbon dioxide, but show strong response to the fatty acids produced by the normal bacterial flora of the skin, particularly emitted from the feet. Some other skin emanations are also reported to play important role in host location. A very minor differences of odors of different host species and different individuals within a species play role in host preference. The status of bacteria a person harbor may determine differential preference by the blood sucking mosquitoes. The odors have usually combined effective range of 7 to 30 meter, but for some species the range may up to 60 meter. So besides this olfactory stimuli, vision is also important in orienting to host, particularly for diurnal species and especially in an open environment and at close ranges. Dark and moving objects are attractive to mosquitoes that we mostly experienced. As the female approaches to within 1 to 2 meter of potential host, besides chemical and visual cues, the convective heat and humidity surrounding the body also play important role in host location. All the stimuli including odor, carbon dioxide, heat, humidity, etc. are detected by the sensilla present on the antenna and the pulps of the mosquitoes. So let us come to know about uh, the feeding behavior of female adult mosquitoes. So, if the combinations of the host stimuli is acceptable, then the female mosquitoes land on the host animal. They usually prefer certain body parts of the host for landing. Suppose legs is one of the preferred part. After landing, she proceeds through four phases of feeding behavior. Number one is exploration. Number two, penetration and vessel seeking. Number three, imbibing and number four, withdrawal. First is the exploration. So initially for few seconds, uh, female mosquitoes remain motionless and then search a particular site which is uh, well vascularized. The whole exploration event is influenced by actually the heat, moisture and chemicals present on the surface of the host skin. Second one is the penetration and vessel seeking. After the selection of feeding site, stylets pierce the skin and labium act as a guide. The teeth present on the maxillae help to grip the tissue and then 
Within the subepidermal tissues from the tip of the hypopharynx, saliva releases. And that saliva comprises antihemostatic enzyme like epirus, anticoagulants, which inhibit platelet aggregation and clot formation of blood. The phagostimulants present in blood uh, perceived by the chemoreceptors that is present in the feeding appendices and helps to locate blood vessels and stimulate ingestion. Third phase is the imbibing. Uh, after finding the blood vessel, the female insert the tip of the fascicle into the vessel lumen and start to imbibe blood through the food canal of the proboscis. In this respect, the muscular pump of the cyberium and also the, of the pharynx help to draw blood through the proboscis and finally the ingested blood accumulate in the midgut of the intestine. The presence of the phagostimulants in the blood uh, like uh, sodium chloride, ATP, sodium bicarbonate, etc. encourage the mosquito to imbibe blood uh, to full engorgement. The last phase is the withdrawal. Uh, female mosquitoes usually take 1 to 4 minutes to fully engorge blood from the host body. During this time, she extract water from the blood mill and deposit small droplet of urine on the host skin. When the female imbibes sufficient amount of blood, then the abdominal stress receptor inform the central nervous system about the full engorgement and after that she stops for the feeding and pushes her forelegs to help to withdraw her stylets. So after withdrawing then she flies away to her resting sites. So these are the four phases of feeding behavior that uh, female mosquitoes usually show during blood feeding. These are some reference books and scientific papers consulted for preparation of this lecture. Reference continues. Uh, interested students can go through these reference books and scientific papers. Friends, after discovering malarial parasite inside the gut of mosquito, Sir Donald Ross who was not only a scientist but also a poet wrote an optimistic poem like with tears and toiling bread i find thy cunning seeds o million murdering date i know this little thing a myriad man will save o date where is thy sting so that was the satisfaction of his discovery. Friends, get interested in the topic whatever may be and enjoy your journey of explorations. If you have any query, then please contact me in the email mentioned here. Finally, offering my gratefulness to Geological Society of Assam, I would like to conclude here. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you.